there, Postal here. So today we're taking out the P51A. This is actually a plane I meant to take out back in February, but I suck and I'm not very good at scheduling. Um, this is a tier six American fighter plane. Uh, yeah, I mean, just, it is what it is, right? It's the next step up from the P50. Um, a lot of a P50, the P40. A lot of people are kind of worried about it because it's only got four of the 50 cal machine guns. Um, and yeah, that can be it can be a little frustrating. These are definitely stronger machine guns than on the P40. Um, but yeah, it can be kind of scary. So, what is this plane? Well. You get a pretty decent chunk of uh, difference when it comes to altitude performance in this plane. You want to take advantage of that. This plane is not the strongest with gunfire, so, well, what is it strong with? Well, it's strong with speed, that's for sure. There's those weak guns doing weak gun things. Um, and it's good with speed. It's good with altitude, good with speed. So let's take advantage of that get our guns on target as quickly as possible get up to a reasonable altitude as quickly as possible what do we got on the enemy team a p38j could be a pain in the butt a spitfire 5 db605 of course um, so a high altitude version of a spitfire just what we needed Nyat. Um, Alright, so let's see what we can do over here. Is there any enemy planes for me to kill over here? Might not be smart. Oh, yeah, there is. Alright, cool. Uh, we need to knock out the boomerangs first. Use our high altitudeness. Get the guy up top first. Oh, there's actually a bomber over here, too. Hmm. Boomerang, if we can. This boomerang, if we can. I do like about the American 50 cal is you just hold them down. Like, who cares? Not gonna overheat, right? Uh, we've got two heavies inbound. One is this P38J friend of ours. Gonna be a fast mover for sure. We've got some speed though. He's not paying attention to us, or didn't pay attention to us, so that's good. Let's go ahead and see if we can't take care of this yak. We'll probably outmaneuver us. Got an ow, friend. Can't knock out this uh, FW, which we should be able to. Alright, see if we can't knock out this BF 110, which we should be able to. Excellent. Um, Alright, cool. Wow, things are looking up. Let's, uh, let's head to the center, I suppose. Let's get uh, some good altitude again. Going to use our boost. We got 10 seconds for the boosts, which is phenomenal at tier 6. Again, I, I can't reinforce it enough. You want to use what strength you have, and your strength is speed and altitude. Um, significant over, you know, significant impact over some of these other planes here. Um, if you've got that ability, hello. Shooting at me. You got two planes shooting at me? Oh, okay. Um, if you've got that ability, then take advantage of it. You should not be down dogfighting in a plane that's not meant to be dogfighting, right? I can take on an FW-190 because... Well, because I cannot maneuver an FW-190. Um, what we want to be doing is focusing on what we can outturn versus what we can't outturn. Can't outturn that dude. Can't outturn this dude. Ah! No, I need my engine. You son of a biscuit. I 
You and your PF 110-ness. Watch out for the zero. Angling down to hopefully get some speed. The zero does, I mean the zero. The Spitfire does have, um, you know, good altitude performance. At least that Spitfire does. But I should be able to outspeed him, I say. There we go. Got my boost on. He's gonna just follow me mindlessly, which seems kind of silly. But to each their own, I suppose. I know he's got as good of altitude performance, but does he realize I'm pulling him across the um, the whole map? Doesn't seem to care, does he? Mindless. He's as bad as a um, as a bot, to be honest. Complete waste of uh, both of our times. And now he's way the hell down there, and I'll spawn here in the center a lot quicker. Cool. Thanks. I guess is what I should be saying. I shouldn't be bitching about him being a goofball. Get me right back in the battle here. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get this yak if I can. Yak's obviously a uh, very maneuverable. Uh, plane and I am not but I'd like to think that I've got it just enough maneuverability excellent oh, there's that Spitfire again let's get up to a reasonable altitude here we can actually dictate the terms of the interaction nobody's taken over a mining facility yet that's pretty weird a tornado which we can pretty easily take on As long as we don't go head on versus him. Jeez. Use our altitude. Use our altitude. Alright. Now we use our speed. Which we have in spades over the freaking tornado. The tornado is not very fast. Definitely does not have good altitude performance. Let's go ahead and take out this guy next. Excellent. All right, so what do we need to look for? They've got a bunch over there. We haven't lost a lot of people though. We need, what do we need to do? Let's go see if we can get the, um... oh, they got both of their light fighters over there. So boomerang and their spitfire. Boomerang's not high altitude, of course. Spitfire is, but... And of course, he's friggin' premium, so I need to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Like, I always forget. Like, oh yeah, he's obviously gonna have um, consumables that you wouldn't normally have. Like, I don't... Like, I'm not specialized, so... I don't have that kind of flexibility. That's okay. I just need to pay attention to what I'm doing. Alright, so we've killed that guy. Let's see if we can't kill this guy and hopefully get the mining facility quicker. Or just, you know, at all. Excellent. Probably don't want to head this guy on. Oh, don't really have a choice here. Let's see if we can't boost away. Oh, he's knocked out the engine, so now we're toast. Got both of them on us? It's pretty sad. It's a sad day for Postal. I'm wondering though, we should still win, I think. 
boomerangs coming back too. Let's see if we can't. Keep on boosting, keep on turning, keep on boosting, keep on turning, knocked out both wings, shoot. Dang. Well, good game though, we still were able to get the win out of that. Even though, man, that guy spent so much time focusing me down. Uh, I can't blame him though, I guess I was having a pretty good big game. Personal points wise. Uh, well, I guess now the thing is, hopefully our, our uh, people just stay alive. Because unfortunately, their two people are still alive. Um, we've got... Yeah, I wasn't able to kill that bomber. We've got our two bombers, though, over here at the uh, mining facility. And then we've got a bombing run going in towards their command center. So it's just really... Will our planes live long enough? Because we're about to get the mining facility. That's definitely going to help in the next 46 seconds. As long as our team is alive. Yeah, so the P-51A, like... I quite like it. Excellent. We've got, now we're definitely going to win. Um, but I like this whole line. P-51D, like, it's, it's one of those tier 7s that, like, you shrug your shoulders and you go, okay... It's just it's a tier seven fighter. There's there's a couple that are good, and then there's most of them that are just mediocre. No, wait a minute, that's the opposite. <laughs> it's the one mediocre one, isn't it? Um, oh, the rest of them are really good. Now that I think about it off the top of my head, and so the P fifty one A I quite like. It's super weak as far as gun armament is concerned, um, but typically I don't have an issue with being able to speed away from planes. And, um, you know, have an impact that way. Let's head on back. All right, so we were able to get 12 kills in there. Some frustrating bits uh, versus that um, Spitfire um, DB605. But that's why I consider this plane to be overpowered. You get it out of the box with the same altitude performance as a P-51A, for instance. It's got the same altitude performance as the BF-109F. Um... And you don't lose anything that a Spitfire 5 has. So really, this is if this isn't overpowered, it is definitely on the verge of it. But under normal circumstances, um, and keep in mind my plane is not specialized, this plane, um, you know, you want to focus on the speed and the altitude performance. I was able to get 12 kills, 400 capture points, um, and got a Koza dub, which I always like getting whenever possible. Uh, and this kind of game, like, there was a handful of times there, I mean, where I got chased down or was, you know, kind of just wasted time getting pulled halfway across the map and I was still able to have a pretty good battle. And you can too. Um, the, the, again, the focus has to be on being and utilizing your altitude. If you compare this plane, is that all the tier? Oh, never mind, whoops. I was going to say, that can't be all the um, tier 6 fighters I've got. If you compare this plane to something like BF-109F, you know, the, you're right there with the altitude performance. The BF-109F has little less airspeed, but decent more maneuverability. Um, you've got weaker guns, if that's even possible on this plane, if I remember correctly. You've got that one 20 mil cannon just seems to, to not do a whole lot of damage. As, as weak as these guns feel, this, this feels even more weak. The key 61, you know, key lines always kind of, you know, quote unquote an altitude uh, fighter, but you can see, I guess I should um, post this up here. You can see the altitude performance just isn't there. And a lot of that has to do with the airspeed. If the airspeed was higher on the key 61, you might have a, um, a better go of it but with with the lower airspeed you're gonna have issues when it comes to the altitude performance on the key 61 Spitfires of course are not gonna have uh, the same kind of airspeed but they definitely if you've got this DB 605 you've got the same altitude performance silly as that sounds um, and you know obviously better guns you've got 220 mil cannons on this and then six Browning machine guns. Um, 
again, it's just, you know, why this plane is, is on the verge of being overpowered. But you've really got nothing else when you look at altitude performance, and we can go down the list here. I'm not even going to waste time on the Yak. P39, your better altitude performance there. So you really, your focus needs to be on your altitude performance and your airspeed. Um, even the Mustang 1A, which is basically a P51A, you know, with cannons, which actual cannons, which is pretty darn nice. I'm going to say very darn nice. Has less altitude performance than its its tech tree counterpart, P51A. And so your focus definitely needs to be on that altitude performance and on that airspeed. If you're staying up high and diving down on planes, you're going to have a lot more success, it's even with these weak guns, because you're getting so many shots on them before they even have a chance to have a reaction, right? And if you if you have that mentality, especially from tier six on, you're going to have much better success when you go from the P51A to the P51D, and then from the P51D to the P51H. The P51H is, is literally more of the same. Um, even better altitude performance, clearly. But you actually start getting a, a decent amount of maneuverability tacked on with this plane. Is it a yak? No. But it's actually quite maneuverable and you can actually dogfight on it, in it. Whereas the P51A, I, don't, I definitely don't recommend doing that. The P, it, but, but the tactics that you will learn in the P51A um, of being up high, of diving down on your targets, of using your airspeed to get away when you need to, in those kind of situations especially, because you'll have great airspeed when you're diving down, are all incredibly viable in the P51H and the FJ-1 and the F-86, but even more so. You've got even more speed, and you've actually got maneuverability to stick with some of those planes when you dive down on them. Uh, they're not going to be able to get away from you. So my, my recommendation is learn that tactic here and now, on the P51A, because it'll only get better as you go up. I can't speak to the P51D, but I'm going to say it, it can't be an outlier on this line. It's you know gonna you're going to have higher altitude, you're going to have higher speed than the tier six, and um, same tactics. You're going to have six guns as well on the P51D, which is certainly going to be a good thing. I think no, I better double check now that I said that. Yep, you've got six of those. Um, those 50 cal machine guns and yeah your altitude performance is you know up another 10 points your airspeed is going to be up another chunk as well and then you've got a decent jump up in maneuverability actually no never mind i'm completely wrong you don't have any change in maneuverability um but your airspeed is going to jump up a decent amount i guess your maneuverability is going to jump up a reasonable amount uh, but nothing, you still don't want to dogfight in this particular plane. Your maneuverability doesn't jump up until you're able to specialize the P-51H. And then it really spikes up to the point where an F-86 is just like ridiculous on the maneuverability front. Um, yeah. So it all starts with this. And if you learn to play a high altitude, high speed, you know, with quotes around it, it's not like the fastest thing in the world. But if you learn with that tactic on this plane, it's going to do nothing but build success going forward. Um, as far as the um, the upgrades are concerned, like the guns jump up in performance isn't you know significant, but you still want to go for the guns first, and then get yourself the airframe and the um, the engine. The engine's really going to make a huge difference. I and mean, I forget if you got the ability to. Nope. I was going to say, if you could pre-research um, any one of these. The answer is no. Well, that stinks. Airframe might be actually your best bet now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, you might actually want to go for the airframe first, and then the guns, and then the engine. Um, just to get, like, get something out of the airframe. Get some more hit points, get some more speed, get some more maneuverability. So you probably want to go with the airframe first and then the guns, because the guns aren't like a significant jump up. Teach their own though, for sure. Once I specialize this plane, ooh, baby. Um, you know, you've got the ability to actually, you know, to, to like you do on any of the American fighters, determine what's gonna be the best bet. 
and I won't know until I actually specialize this plane, but will the best bet be to do, um, um, you know, having speed all the way across and just completely screw your maneuverability? Or would it be best to have a maneuverability on the airframe and then more speed on the engine? Um, I'm not sure. I think that's probably what's gonna be best because I don't wanna completely screw up my maneuverability. So probably put a lightweight wing frame on here and then do that, um, the um, injection boost system here on the engine. Since you have 10 seconds of boost on this, which you're not used to using um, on fighters, you know, losing some of your boost, like going down to nine or maybe even eight seconds is not necessarily detrimental, um, especially if your boost is gonna be more effective, but we'll have to play that by ear and we will see. I suspect once this plane is specialized, it's actually gonna be incredibly impactful on a battle. You'll have a, a decent chunk of airspeed and um, be able to just continue to go from there. Keep in mind also my pilot is just a six point pilot. I have put on here aerodynamics expert, which isn't really helpful right now because there's only one equipment slot. Once I have the three equipment slots available here, he's gonna, you know, this 40% is gonna be extrapolated on those additional two um, slots and be incredibly impactful. From there, I would probably go with aerobatics expert. Um, although I might go with cruise flight just because on a plane like this, um, you know, that is literally meant to go from sector to sector. Something like cruise flight is very helpful where you can see further and you get some extra boost while you're not being shot at. But we'll play it by ear. It'll be one of these two probably. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. But that being said, this, this plane, it's not the best at tier six. It just isn't, right? It takes a lot to make it um, impactful. You've got to be thinking uh, and paying attention to your map at all times. There's going to be heavy planes that are really going to want to take you down. But keep in mind, you can outmaneuver those heavy planes. You really want to be actually focusing on taking down heavy planes because your your lack of maneuverability and your positive in airspeed is going to make um, your ability to attack heavy planes a viable tactic for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I again, this plane, this line, I know it's not everybody's favorite, but it ends up with one of the best tier 10 fighters in the game. And you can make the, the line enjoyable. You can make it fun if you're just paying attention. And I say just paying attention, like I know there's a lot going on, so I don't want to minimize people's ability to pay attention, but that can really help put you to the next level on this plane. Um, and focus on that altitude performance, focus on that airspeed. It's, what's, it's what separates this plane um, and the BF-109F from the rest of the planes of this tier. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Do you agree with my assessment? Is this a plane that, um, that you want to go down now? Um, or is it a plane that you're just, you're over it. Get me done with this plane. Get me done with the P-51D. Um, get me to the P-51H and above. I'd like to hear your comments below or in uh, Discord. And if you've got any recommendations for any um, planes that you want to see me fly, Feel free to hop in my Discord. I've got a, a whole section there just for video requests. Um, or you can always leave a comment down below. Otherwise, have a great day. Bye.